right at the beginning when I started kind of coaching the metronomic system, I thought, how on earth am I going to get people to buy into this and just do it for the first 90 days and come to the end of the 90 days, you've got a leadership team who's sort of saying, this works for us. We don't want to give it up anymore. Welcome to Tip Top, Grow Up Your Business with Metronomics. Join me, Shannon Burns Susco, and Metronomics Certified Coach, Jed Roberts. We'll be talking to business thought leaders, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and business team coaches who have all taken the journey to grow up their businesses to their tip top. We'll be sharing strategies, systems, stories, on how you can grow your company at the speed you want. If you're searching for your path to the tip top and feel your time is running out, then this podcast is for you. Hey everyone, it's Shannon Susco. Great to be back. Welcome. Um, Today joining us is Jean Moncroft and he's a metronomics coach, global entrepreneur. Um, podcast host, uh, workshop host, driver of great businesses. Jean, welcome. Thank you very much. Wow, what an introduction. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. <laughs> well, you it know, sounds- you always, look, you always get, you know, the the whole thing. And I always look in, why, why do I want to talk to Jean today? Why do I love talking to you? One, you bring energy to the conversation, two, enthusiasm to entrepreneurship, three, impact for entrepreneurs, four, your expertise around marketing and business and your global presence. So, you know, that's a nutshell on why you're absolutely here and I'm excited to talk to you today. Can you give us an idea? You've had quite a journey. I just sort of listed off all those things, Um, but give us an idea of how you've gone from you know, where you started in business to how you've ended up as a metronomics coach and just the big moves, right? That's what I was looking at. Even when I was prepping for this, you've had some big moves. What have been those moves to get you here today and driving and supporting entrepreneurs worldwide? Yeah, sure. So I think um, it goes back to growing up in the US and there was the, my, my parents had a license plates which read live free or die and this kind of idea of freedom was sparked there and I think that ties really closely with with um, entrepreneurship so there were these two things going on like yard sales and lemonade sands and, and that was kind of the first taste of entrepreneurship and some of my core values and we went home to South Africa where I spent the rest of my life growing up and going to school and I came out of school joined my father, built the first business with him, which is a memory hardware kind of supplier business. And then basically did a deal with the guys who supplied the memory to us and kind of started scaling things there and had some good experiences, some bad experiences, got into building web content management systems before uh, WordPress even came around and always had kind of these visions of building these things, but went through some of those big bumps uh, that we've all lived through, you know, when things crash and and we have to figure out how to survive. So the dot-com boom and, and the dot-com bubble bursting in you know, 2008, and then went on to build a information management business, um, basically doing document storage, document imaging. And when I was building that, I was trying to go from kind of five, sorry, 5 million to 10 million to 15 million to 20 million. And the whole focus was just on the top line, grow, 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 grow. And that's all I was thinking about. And then it came a point where we decided it's time to sell and worried about what was going on back home and children and growing up as a family. And that's when I realized the business wasn't worth what I thought it was worth. Fortunately, I was involved with this fantastic community, the small giants, and lent on them heavily. And they helped me by introducing systems like EOS and Great Game of Business. And that was back in 2010 or so. So we brought those into the business, went through that learning curve, and ultimately I ended up exiting that business. But I, I think the experience set me on a different path. And that's what took me to coaching businesses and to where I'm now as a metronomics coach. Um, and specifically metronomics was, aside from this fantastic community, but I felt like all the other systems I'd used in the past were missing something. And when I got to, to finding metronomics, it was okay, this gives me the flexibility to meet the folks that I'm trying to help where they're at. 
I think that's in a nutshell how I came to where I yeah. am right now. Love it. Love it. And I love the entrepreneurial experiences you've had in growing businesses because you have great empathy as we do for what the leaders you know are going through that we're coaching. What's one of them, if you think of even from your entrepreneurial journey or your coaching journey, what's one of those big ahas that you had from seeing business from the inside out? Because we all started from the inside and then we're now on the outside, you know, looking in. What's, what's yeah. one of those ahas that, that you've taken away and, and, and that experience and thinking about, you know, working with the frameworks you've worked with and now with Metronomics? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting question. I think probably more recently, one of the big ones in, has come out of the conversations I've had in working on on this book uh, that I'm, I'm putting together. And we talk about these three big barriers to growth. So leadership, market dynamics, and getting processes and systems in place. And I think you know, one thing that just keeps coming through all the time from every conversation I had or I've, I've been having is people, 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 get the right people, get the right people. You know, we, we've had a lot of conversations about focus, but I, I see this, you know, there's these three big barriers to growth, but the one that could fall potentially under leadership as well is people. You know, there's so many folks I've spoken to, great entrepreneurs who've said to me, if only I got the people right earlier, it, it would have been easier. So I think that's something that I've picked up on uh, more recently. And, you know, the, the funny thing is, like, we've been in business, we've built businesses, we've scaled businesses, um, and it's like right in front of us. It's right in front of us. And one of the reasons, you know, I do what I do is I love working with teams, love building strategies and all those pieces. But in order to build that validated, confident, clear strategy, we can't get there unless we get the team, the leadership team right. And, you know, I always think of it as no different than playing on, you know, any team, whether it's a sport team or a business team. But it definitely comes back over and over and over again. As we know, it's the number one barrier to growth. It's the hardest thing to see for teams, leaders who are listening in. It's the hardest thing for us to see, right? As a coach on the outside, looking in, it becomes much more obvious uh, that, you know, it's the leaders, the teams that, that's holding us back from the opportunity we have at hand. Now, thinking about, if you think about the businesses that, you know, we work with both, you know, you've been on the team scaling, you've been coaching, growing them. What's the biggest misconception? Do you think leaders, like what have you observed that leaders have when trying to scale their business, when trying to grow it? What's their biggest misconception? I, I think you know, the first thing that comes to mind is that very often they're looking for a silver bullet. And this takes yeah, longer. I, was. Than, <laughs> I, was so, <laughs> I mean, yeah. straight away that just kind of jumps into my head as you ask that question. Oh <laughs> you, you know, we this is this is a process. And I was thinking about this today, funnily enough, and the energy with teams. And you you create a great team, a team that goes to Olympics or a team that plays on the sports field. But the coaching and the work's never done. You you're constantly kind of working with that team to keep them to be the best and you know that's a competitive advantage in any industry is having that winning team so yeah i i think um this the time to get this done and, and then i think the other big thing is kind of self-awareness and intention and realizing that as the leader or the founder of the business was the leadership team there's there's got to be this this, you know, we talk about the willingness to change and that's got to happen. There's going to be change and you have to go through that change. So I think those things are probably the two kind of big ones that I'm seeing at the moment. Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. there's always a want, like everybody wants to scale, wants to grow, right? The want, it's a matter of, you know, just sort of looking at the brutal facts of 
where the organization, put the want out there, but look at the brutal facts on where the organization is and, and figuring out, do we have the team to get there? Do we understand yeah. the market well enough? Do we have, are we set up, you know, for those processes? And I really think, you know, you, you just touched on it, which I think is so critical for, I had this misconception, which was um, thinking in business, we are building it to be the best. Like thinking we're, we're building to be the best. And if you're listening in, most people are going, well, aren't we? And the thing that unlocked it for me was Michael Porter's, you know, yeah. building it to get on your unique dimension. You're building it to yes. be unique, uh, that core customers will buy from you at that. And that was a huge misconception. And I would still say it is today because we yeah. grew up thinking, oh, we have to be the best. We really just have to be, if we want to be the best, we have to be the best on our unique dimension because we'll be the only one there, right? Yeah, um, and so many businesses are just chasing the competition and they're yes. so focused on how do we do yes. more of what they're doing? Well, have our marketing like them? Well, they said this, yeah. do we do that? And yeah, it's you, and, you're not competing <laughs> effectively. And, and as you know, in our in our system, we you know know that market expertise and the dynamics of the market is critical for coming up with that strategy um, and to keep the strategy alive. But it's not we're going head to head with the competitors. It's so we can position ourselves over there in white space where our competitors are not, and we're serving a core customer. They're, we're serving their needs, and I think it's just such a huge. I mean. I had that, I know in, when people are in your business, you're just chasing it rather than taking that step out, getting time to work on the business. What, um, so you talked about willingness to uh, evolve behavior, commit and evolve. And we know that when we're working with CEOs and leaders, uh, they want to grow, they need to commit, right? They, they commit and they're usually committed but how are they committed to grow themselves along with the growth of their company? What's been the most challenging experience you have in terms of resistance? I, I don't like the word change. So I'm going to say resistance to the evolution of the system. And, and how did you help navigate a team through it? Yeah, such a good question. I, I think part of it is not wanting to, not wanting to trust the system as we, you know, we, we talk about, you know, but how is the saying going sort of, um, I've gone, gone blank on, uh, on, on the, <laughs> on the saying. Uh, anyway, I'll come to you, but essentially trusting the system. And I think that's the big challenge. The, the, the beauty of metronomics for me is that is the flexibility and being able to meet folks where they're at but going back to the point earlier you know this is a marathon it's not a sprint and we've got to set ourselves up for a marathon and it means kind of sticking to that training program so you know from the simple things like the daily huddles which i'll admit even right at the beginning when i started kind of coaching the metronomic system i thought how on earth am i going to get people to buy into this and just just do it, do it for the first 90 days and come to the end of the 90 days, you've got a leadership team who's sort of saying that this works for us. We don't want to give it up anymore. So yeah, it, it's from doing those, those small things and just following, trusting the system, carry on and trust the system. Yeah. I knew you're going to, yeah. that, you know, there you go. Yes. That's keep that's calm and keep trust calm. Sorry, the trust the system. Got that's it. it. I <laughs> got it. That. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, we know, I love that you brought up the huddles because it's one of those things that we know leaders push back on, right? They're like, yeah. really? We have to huddle every day. Like, really? Why would we do this? And, you know, it's that one thing as a coach that is like, look, 15 minutes every day. Can everyone show up? Team habit. We're going to turn on a team habit. Can everyone show up? 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. We know, like, You've kicked off many clients. I've kicked off many clients. We know once that gets going, it's really like they'll never stop because it's that missing piece of connection and focus on the playing field towards the team goal 
the team result and where you know where they want to end up it's uh so connective um i have to say from my own perspective i know you know growing up my own businesses with this system and then you know coaching it in to companies it's like the number one thing we, we get a team to huddle every day like as a coach it's like just getting them to buy into that just just to get it started we know it will work really well and you mentioned your own team there you know i got a small but mighty four-person team i just got back from italy and the first thing there's like so great that the huddles are back because i was traveling and i wasn't kind of jumping in and somebody else yes that holiday period where everything gets a bit icky and everybody's like we're back to it that was great so we often talk about learning as a tool right we talk about that can you share a time when like maybe it was in your business or you're coaching a business when you failed spectacularly i can't even say spectacularly I got my s's and how you turned that moment into a growth opportunity and it could be one of your clients or something that that you learned along the way but what's one of those moments because we all have those sort of like you know big moments those you know, in Canada, we'd say a TSN turning point. I don't know what they'd say in the US or anywhere else in the world, but that's very Canadian of me. What, what's that big, what's that big moment for you? I guess that the, the biggest moment for me was that wake up call that I got where I realized that what I'd been chasing, you know, in terms of acquiring businesses and growing through the 5, 10, 15 million, ultimately got a point where it just actually wasn't worth what I believed or thought it was to be worth. And and sitting in front of potential acquirers, kind of being told I might be locked in for a six-year earnout and all those kind of things. What yeah. on earth? Yeah, th- I've just spent the last 15 like odd years building this cost. thing. Yeah. 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 And I, I think that was a wake up. And that's what took me to using systems like EOS and Great Game of Business yeah. and yeah. set me on this path to helping other yeah. business owners. So I... I guess for me, it's also this, I wish there was a way to help business owners to understand how important this is quicker. And, you know, I think that we, we talk oh, about having a purpose that. and, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. my, my purpose is, is all around helping business owners to, um, to thrive and prosper. And yeah, it's, it's kind of every day, how do you be more purposeful about that? Getting up and trying to spread the word and you, I guess, so see what I do on LinkedIn and that sort of thing. But it's, yes. how do you do this every single day to try and educate the people that you want to help? And I just wish that we, a lot of us would wake up well, to it more well, quickly. Well, I love, I love your commitment to that through the experience. And I love our community has all had experience somewhere along the way. They had a big aha, a learning yeah. moment. And they're bringing it back into their practice, their impact, their give back. And, and you do... You know, you've got podcasts going again, with, which are fantastic. If listeners are reading in, well, make sure there's links to your podcast. You've got um, ongoing uh, webinars for people just to come, come yeah, and learn, right? And unlock. Learn. What's the lever that you need to unlock? And really, it's your commitment to ensuring that, you know, you're making sure the same the same reason why I show up every day here yes. as well is from the learning that we had those big aha moments to make sure no one goes through what we went through. Right? Exactly. No one goes through that. We, what we Nailed went through. It. Everyone spends a lot of time building their business and we want to ensure that they get that whatever success is for them. That's what we're absolutely driving, driving. To. Yeah. So when you're not coaching, right. What's your favorite way to like disconnect, recharge, you know, like what, what's your thing? What's your thing outside of coaching? That's the thing you'll love to do. Outside of coaching, I think you know, there's always been this element of adventure and travel. So whether it's yeah, you know, getting away with a group of entrepreneurs and doing a ski trip or <laughs> going into the woods and kind of doing a, a bit of camping or something, yeah, those, I, I think it's important to be able to step away for a bit and just kind of let the thoughts sort of bubble away. So yeah. p- taking a journal along, spending time alone in, in the woods in a cabin is something yeah. like that. Well, let's I love doing talk that. <laughs> a little bit about you away in the woods. Were you not, you, you've set out on a journey. 
after I would say April of last year, coming out of tip top, learning yeah. from Ben Hardy, 10 X is easier than two X. Tell us a little bit about that impact on your thinking, spending the time, really thinking, resetting, talk about that process a little bit. That was impressive and, and it is impressive. Yeah. And I, I, I try and sort of talk, put this in front of clients as, as often as I can. I think you know, one of the things as entrepreneurs that we do is, is we're, we're involved in everything all the time. And what, what I took away from uh, Tip Top this year was, and it took, you know, spending a bit of time thinking about that in yeah. the back kind of waters of Tennessee, renting a, an Airstream <laughs> and just taking Look, a bit of time and journaling and <laughs> kind of doing that. that but awesome. it was, how do you raise the floor? And, you know, when Ben talks about raising the floor, he talks about lifting the, the floor up and he talks about saying no to everything that's not kind of in line with where you're trying to go and what you're trying to achieve. And for me, this this mission that I'm on to help uh, a million entrepreneurs by 2030, and that ties to that core uh, purpose of basically making sure that uh, business owners are set up to prosper and to to thrive and to prosper. So I really spent time thinking about that. And I thought, okay, what are the things that I've really got to focus on right now? And it came down to getting the book done so I can get that out into the hands of everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a moment, your book, because we need to learn more about that. Yeah. I really want to know about your reframing journey, because I love it. Getting the podcast done and launched. Yeah. And yeah. it came down to sort of building my personal brand, and along with that, the clients that I'm working with. So I yeah. started saying no to everything else and just yeah. focusing on those things. And, you know, it's it's been, what's nearly six months now, I guess, since then. Yeah. Yes. But it's it's had a remarkable, yeah, uh, made a remarkable change to what I'm doing. I mean, the, yeah. the book is through first drafts and all that. It's getting ready to the point where, um, okay. as, as far as the Sorry. publishers are, are concerned, they wanted me to get into people's hands by November for the first read. Love you to be one of those folks. Yeah, so I would love that. But, uh, but do you have a title yet? Do you have a title yet? I'm I'm working with the title, which is Intentional Growth. And yes. I've, you know, it's funny, I, I, I've known Bo Burningham for okay. years and years, and we were talking about Small Giants a little while ago, and he nearly called right up to the day, walked in front of the publisher and put the book down. He was, the, the title was something about Mojo, because it's all about businesses with Mojo. Yeah. And the publisher yeah. said, no. Nah. And he leaned on somebody else and they came up with Small Giants. So... I've used the title to guide me, but I know that the publishers are going to go through a process. Well, well I'm really glad it. because I asked you that and I asked you that out of, you know, pure uh, understanding and empathy for the process because yeah. you need something and then you, you write to that and then they, they go, oh, I don't like that title and you got to come up with something else and you work it and you work it and then you need a cover and all that. But like for, okay, so who's the book for? What's the key? What are like a couple of key takeaways? And uh, you're looking for it to be out like late in the year, early next year. Give me a little yeah. bit of details on that. We're working on April 2025. Um, okay. So they've kind of said hey, to me, exciting. December's not great, but yeah, April 2025. Okay. And, I, and I think that's good. I think we've got that locked in. So I'm kind yeah. of comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm ahead of the game a little bit at the moment. Yes. <laughs> Don't feel that way when you're writing a book. You never feel that way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically, the, the first part of the book is really deals with this idea of being intentional about what we're trying to do with the business. And I've even gone as far as in the way I work with clients, looking at what the target equity valuation is and things like that. So instead of just having sort of top line profits, what's in the bank brought in, what's the value that, you know, so again, thinking of what Ben Hardy was talking about, you start to make decisions through a filter about the business. You know, do I buy the new BMW yacht, whatever it is, or do we reinvest it? And you start filtering your decisions um, based on what your intention is with the business. So the, the first part is really about 
the business owner and to help them get their heads around this idea of being more intentional about how you're building probably your most valuable asset. And so many of the clients I speak to come to me and they say, either, you know, being through a divorce and my partner's taken the house, I've got the business and suddenly they've realized this is an asset and it's, it's because they've been through that process. So now it's okay. What's it worth? How do I value it? And I, again, I wish people would kind of get, understand this earlier. The next thing is kind of about regaining momentum. So you know, get your intention right then. How do we help you regain momentum, which obviously leans heavily on metronomics. And, you know, those are the stories of Carl Saunders and Richard Bryan and, and other folks. And I saw so many of them in the last few years where changes in leadership suddenly kind of brought on that hockey stick growth. And that's all about helping them to regain and find momentum. And then the, the sort of third section is about building the value in the business. So whether you're thinking about selling it or se- whatever your succession plan is, whether it's an ESOP, um, an, an employee trust, how do you build the value in the business? And then the final part is about you know, what I ultimately want as I sort of change chapter uh, in my life. And there's almost an element of giving something back there because I went through that experience. Bo Burlingham wrote Finishing Big, or oh, finished big about a decade ago. And we were all in the room together at Zingerman's when he was finishing his title and asked us what he thought of this cover and that title. And there was nothing around at that time. And, and exiting has become a big conversation topic now over the past decade. But I also think there's a lot of inf- misinformation out there. And there's a lot of folks out there talking about picking up businesses for nothing and no money down and all sorts of things. And I really think that business owners need to be aware of what's going on out there, what their, dis- their, their sort of decision-making process can be. So I've approached it more, not, not going into the nitty gritty, but more from, okay, you know, this is the next chapter and how are you thinking about that? So that's in a nutshell what it's all about. Love it. That, that's fantastic because we know uh, leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs spend most of their life, their time, building their business. And it's one of the things that, that I love about what we get to do. And they think the value is here, but if we just, you know, put the system in place, do the work, we can get it to here. Right. And, and that we can get that awareness of the value of the organization that they've built because I, it blows me away. It blows me away of some of the, the thoughts they have. Oh, you know, my business is only worth this. I go, do you have 24 months, more months that you would put the system in place to drive the value, look at that strategically and drive the awareness of what a great asset has been built? I mean, we talk to CEOs, entrepreneurs every day. You're sitting on something with a massive amount of energy potentially. And if we can unlock that energy, this this thing can take off. And that that's how I'm kind of viewing it. You, how do we take what's there and build a value, not just focus on the revenue, and, but how do we increase the multiple and the value? Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of people think, oh, well, that's good enough. My value's here. You know, they've got a great business going. It's been going for 20 years. And I go, really? That's what you think you could get for your business? I, I like, you know, and I always ask, what, how do you value? Because I want to know what they think. And it's like one times, two times, like it's really low. And I think it's just like, they're not aware how great a business they've built. And they're very inward focused. They're not looking out. No, they're not. We we know like we're coming from the outside and we know it's like here, right? You know, it's up here and getting them to see that and then tell the story for that and everything. I mean, it's probably one of the the best things we do uh, with our entrepreneurs and seeing those exits and success. We have so many good ones. Uh, You've had them. I've had them in our community where they're seeing like 20 times, you know, uh, evaluation of what they thought. Like that, like that is, that's like just music to my ears because we want, they put so much effort, time, value into this. And there, there, a lot of times, you know, we find our CEOs, entrepreneurs, they're really tired. They're tired and they're like, ah, oh, that's good enough. They're like, that's good enough. 
I usually go, do you have a, do you have a little bit more energy that we can take it? You know, do you have a, like eight more quarters and we'll just take it. Like, wouldn't, w- would you be a happy if it was here? And sort of just setting the expectations, look at what's out there and sort of opening up what they're looking at. It's that, that's going to be a fabulous book, by the way, because it, it, I think you're right. It is not talked about enough. It's not thought of, and there's lots of, you know, we deal with CEOs and entrepreneurs all over the place who are looking for an exit and don't, you know, it's probably the only time they're ever going to do it. They'll do one exit. You do one exit in your life and, and it, it is targeted at that generation, the, the sort of baby boom is Gen X is like, you know. And they spent their whole life building it. I mean, from the other side, I can say, and, and you've had experience with it too, like uh, we had early experiences of growing a business, selling it, growing a business, selling it, right? And it's shaped, you know, why we do what we do today. Here's, I have two more questions for you. This is, a, a, oh, wait, wait, wait. So book is April, 2025. Uh, you're in good shape. Uh, podcast is up and running. You've got your webinars going. So people can learn a lot more about, you know, intentional growth. Loads of stuff for, for free. <laughs> yeah. Dial in and listen. Yeah. yeah, dial in and grab the value. Okay. Two more questions. And one is, you know, th- I just, I, I know you're on the bleeding edge of things. So I'm always curious to ask this question. So, you know, as businesses start to learn more and get more into AI and technology, right? So like, that's the, that's the trendiest thing to talk about AI. And it's like AI, you know, and it can mean anything. Um, How do you see the role of coaches like yourself evolving in, you know, the tech driven future with AI in it? Like, how, how are you seeing that with your clients? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I remember seeing a magazine lying on my father's part. I think it was Bike Magazine all those years ago. And it said, we'll never need more than a 286 or a 386 or something like that. So I'm very cautious about how I put what I say. But I think that you know, the big challenge with business owners is, is getting stuff done and executing. And, and at the moment, like for the foreseeable future, I don't see AI doing that very well. I, I think it can play a role, but you know, it's like along comes the idea of virtual assistants or along comes the idea of content marketing or whatever it is. But you know what? We still have the same damn problems and we just don't get stuff done. And this goes maybe back to what Benjamin Hardy is saying. It's like, it's not going to be about the AI or the new technology or the new tool. It's It's about getting super focused. Now I can tell you that, or AI can tell you that. And I suppose as AI, AI evolves, I'll say, look, you know, you need to get really clear on your, your core customer and you, you need to kind of put your market map together and find your white space, but it's actually doing the work. And I think that's where we come in as coaches, where we've had real experience. I mean, we're talking about stuff that's generative AI at the moment. I know there's all sorts of other fancy stuff going on out there, but business owners have enough trouble just trying to get what what's got to be done right now, let alone dealing with whole AI kind of side of things. And I think it, it can always be that shiny distraction at the moment. You've got to think about how you kind of plugging into the business and using it strategically to get shit done. So to speak. Yeah. I, mean, I, I love that answer because, you know, we work with all kinds of different companies and AI has applications all over the place. But the, the thing that I love about work we're doing is, is like laying out the strategy, laying out the swim lanes, the 12 quarters to how we're going to get there, and then pull on the things available, technology and other things, to get us there. And really, you know, going in with a focused application of not only AI, but other technology as well. Because a lot of people are like going, if you're not doing AI, you know, you're in trouble. But it's just how can that improve your strategy? How that can that improve, you know, serving your core customer, all those things. Love that. One thing I think that is so big is the soft side of things, that, that the purpose, and you right now you don't want to pull that from AI. You, you know, we talk about creating a strategy. We've got to find the energy for the people to execute that strategy. And that comes from the soft side, from purpose and, and 
that's what re-energizes people to execute a strategy. And I, I feel like that's the stuff that's missing. Anyway. So what's one piece of advice you'd give to entrepreneurs, CEOs, leaders who are just starting to build their metronomics journey? What's one piece of advice you'd give them? <laughs> it goes back to trust the system. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as a coach, Absolutely. I've got to make sure I'm meeting them where they're at and doing my job, yeah. but yeah. trust the system, give it the time you think of this as a marathon and think of your, you know, your first 12 months, if, if, if that's what it takes as that foundation year about just focusing on those three things we've got to get right, get the cash system working. That means we've got to get the money flowing through the business and it ties into your marketing, your sales and all those kind of things. But that's what we work on. We're not going to fix that in a quarter. It's going to take us a few quarters to get that right. Get your leadership team right, the people right, and get comfortable with the execution. I think for me, you you got to go into regaining momentum and scaling the business, knowing that we're, we're pulling a team together and we're kind of going to go through a rigorous <laughs> training thing and just trust it. We'll come out the other side. The only way out is through. <laughs> yeah, it's trust the system. And I love that you said, you know, it, it's trust the system, trust the coach that has the system, right? I mean, that that's one of the biggest things that I'm just so um, blown away with is our community of coaches uh, who understand the system and who are, you know, stepping it in progressively with our clients to get the results they want. Beautiful. Um, here's here's a what what question should I have asked you that I didn't? I think we covered everything really well. Um, yeah, I, I, I think we've, we've done a great job. So I, I, <laughs> what, I, I what are you it. reading at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> what? There you go. All right. <laughs> what is, I love this. Cause I also, so what, what's the, what book are you reading right now? I've just picked up Rob Dubé's shine. I've got a call with him next week. So I thought I'd not, not for a podcast for something else, but just kind of read that. And I, I've honestly just picked it up. So going to be getting into that and I just well, I look down. forward to your feedback on that one. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you, I'll tell yeah. You what, so it's Rob yeah. Duban, and Gina Wickman. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I read it. Uh, interesting book. Uh, good perspective from especially where they've come from. So lots of good. Yeah. I'm interested to, to go to read and see. Yeah. 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 Super good. Um, well, with that, I want to say thank you. It's uh, I know we can talk for hours. Um, but, but thank you so much for bringing your energy, your passion, and really for making an impact for, with entrepreneurs. Um, I love it. This, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, yeah it, it blows me away, so. uh, doing it on a global basis. Uh, you're the, I have to add this in because people need to know if, if Jean says he's going to show up somewhere globally, <laughs> Jean will get there in time for the, the meeting, the session. <laughs> Whatever it might yeah. be, it's amazing what the effort you put in and the commitment you put in to serving entrepreneurs. Thanks, Thank everyone. You, um, thanks for being here. It's Shannon thanks. Sasko. Tip top, uh, grow your business uh, to into whatever you would like. And Jean and coaches are here to support you. Tip top is brought to you by Metronomics. To find out more about Metronomics and how this proven 20 year old system will save you time and money as you grow up your business, visit metronomics.com. That is M E T R O N O M I C S dot com. Share your thoughts on today's episode in the comments and suggest topics you'd love us to explore the next time. Also search for Metronomics in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and anywhere else that great podcasts are found.